Hey there, Mr. Reddit here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today, Karen takes my job I had literally just been promoted to. After that, Entitled Woman wants me to chance my safety because she is impatient. After that, no good deed goes unpunished. And after that, Entitled Parent wants money for shoes he didn't bring back because they were labeled wrong. And if you're new, please subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. Karen takes my job I had literally just been promoted to. Warning now, if you're looking for a happy ending, turn back now. Also mobile, buckle up people, this is a long one. Big thanks for my manager for giving me permission to share this story as a form to let off steam. For context, I worked in this job part-time for six years. I loved that place, and the only part I could complain about is the customer that made me lose faith in humanity and my coworker, Karen, hair and all, though she has the voice of a goblin, no joke. Though Karen wasn't actually that bad until she was given a little bit of power. A couple months ago, Karen received a sudden promotion that no one had expected to customer service management. Not real title, but pretty much the equivalent. We'll abbreviate to CSM. There was a different HR issue that had occurred at the job, which left the position vacant. The acting manager at the time, our real manager was on long-term disability at the time, relevant later in the story was pressured by head office to fill the position immediately. Thus, Karen came to power. I was upset by the sudden promotion as I hadn't even been given the opportunity to even interview. But my supervisor explained to me that Karen's new position as CSM meant that she would be handling all the customers while I could actually get my own personal work done. He also informed me that a brand new position technical service manager was being written up for our location, a full-time position with absolutely no interactions with any customers while dealing with the complicated machinery and programs that we deal with. This was my dream position. He told me to hang on for three months for our regular manager to return from leave and I'll be given the interview for the position. So during those three months, Karen's newfound power began to manifest, bossing the part-timers around, taking extra long breaks, and passing rude comments to me like, I just want you to be as successful as I am, you'll get the position next time, and just try to do better. I regret now not recording these interactions, but at the time, I was simply looking forward to the full-time position coming up. So August comes and my regular manager returns to the job. Two days later, I am brought into her office for a meeting. Manager tells me that the interview was really just a formality and she was extremely proud on how much I had supported the business in her absence, citing that my two supervisors had nothing but praise for me. She shook my hand and gave me a big hug when I started crying. My dream job, I could do what I loved at the business without dealing with the customers. Karen, however, had different plans. When the manager announces to the staff of my new position, we were all close there. Karen huffed. I thought that was the position I was hired for, she whined. Our supervisor, who was confused by this, informed her. Uh, no, Karen. You were promoted specifically for the CSM. That is your title. OP's title is Technical Services Manager. Karen huffed and went into the bathroom. About an hour later, after everyone had finished congratulating, I was called into the manager's office. I figured there was a paper or something I forgot to sign and went back immediately. To my surprise, however, manager was sitting there with Karen. Manager. OP, could you take a seat, please? We have something to discuss. Confused. I took a seat out in the hallway and brought it into the office, sitting down. The manager then continued. By the way she spoke, I could tell she didn't want to tell me what had just happened, but was forced to. Manager. OP, 
As you know, several months ago, Karen was hired suddenly as CSM, right? Me. Yeah, of course. She won't let me forget about it. Yeah, probably not the right thing to say, but I was on cloud nine at the time. And when I get excited, my ADHD shows. Manager. Well, Karen told me that she was under the understanding that she had been working as a TSM, not CSM. I look at Karen and shrug. I don't understand what the issue is. We had talked after her promotion, and she told me that the acting manager at the time specifically selected her, as she didn't think I would do well as CSM. She wanted to make sure there was no hard feelings between us, which there wasn't at the time. Karen. That's not true. You confronted me, asking why I got the position and not him. The manager just sighs. Look, OP, just for now, you two have to share the CSM and TSM side of things until we get this sorted out. I'm going to get the original contract you signed from the acting manager. So that happened roughly a month ago, but unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as getting and reading the paperwork. You see, the paperwork that the acting manager had Karen sign was the incorrect paperwork. In fact, it was the paperwork for a completely different department that actually had a TSM role already. Because of this, HR had to get involved and we just got the ruling about two weeks ago. As the paperwork was vague, it could stand to reason that it could be interpreted as TSM role for my department. The manager was instructed to grant Karen the position I was hired for, and I was given the option to transfer to a different location entirely to take up the TSM position there, which was completely out of the question, as I don't have a vehicle. Accept the CSM position from Karen, or return to being part-time and allow the company to hire someone new for CSM. I asked why Karen couldn't be given the TSM position at the other location as she had a vehicle, but apparently her ex worked there and it was an extremely messy breakup. It pained me, but I took the CSM job as it was still an increase in pay, even though I don't enjoy dealing with customers. My real manager and my supervisor are extremely sympathetic for what happened, my manager even giving me another hug when I broke out crying. She, bless her heart, advised me to approach the labor board in regards to this, as she also knew this was unfair to me, but it seems as though because of the paperwork, nothing is really going to come from that avenue, and my cousin, who is a secretary to an attorney, seems to agree. I received a written apology from the acting manager about the situation she put me in, which included a $50 gift card to Tim Hortons. A nice gesture, but doesn't really make up for it. I know it was most likely an honest mistake, but still. As for Karen, everyone now hates her. She has been throwing her position and power around for the past two weeks and basically making everyone feel uncomfortable. She used to be well respected in our store, but after what she had done to me, everyone has now been actively avoiding her. The DM of our workplace D&D group has informed me she is no longer welcome to his house. My, technically, former supervisor forgets to ask her what she wants from Tim Hortons whenever he takes orders, and two days ago, her lunch was thrown out by mistake when a coworker cleaned out the fridge. As for me, well, I'm hanging on. Honestly, it is clear that Karen is not right for the position as she has been making many mistakes. The customers are annoying me to no ends and I'm finding it difficult to handle the stress. But with my manager understanding what's happening, she's been helping me out as much as possible at the front counter. My hope is that Karen will end up doing something that will get herself fired as she has made a lot of enemies and has been screwing up a lot. I don't think I need any actual legal advice or anything, as Karen seems to be doing that quite well on her own. I'm feeling a little better now that I've got this out of my system. Today had been an especially stressful day with customers, and I honestly felt I needed to vent some of the frustration from this situation I've gotten myself into. If you've taken the time to read this whole thing, thanks. Brief edit. The secretary of the attorney is my cousin, not my friend.
Next we've got Entitled woman wants me to chance my safety because she is impatient. Some background information. This happened last year, near the end of October. I was a junior in high school, now a senior. I live in a small city in Virginia. In the morning, when I'm driving to school, I have to pass by an elementary school that gets heavy traffic from buses and people dropping off their kids, meaning it may take a while before I can pull out onto the road. The crossing guards assigned to the school pay no attention to the road me and others come out of. Also, keep in mind that I was a new driver at the time. My car is a 2009 Hummer H3 that I absolutely adore, but that doesn't really matter in regard to this situation. Now, onto the story. I was sitting at the entrance to my road and waiting to pull out onto the state route. Of course, since none of the crossing guards pay attention to my road, they don't stop traffic so we can pull out and be on our way meaning we have to wait for an opening to pull out. I'm looking left and right to find any possible openings for me to pull out onto the state route. I looked right, cars coming. Then I looked left and nearly jumped when I saw a middle-aged woman standing at my driver's side window who had gotten out of her car behind me for whatever reason. Cautiously, I rolled the window down to see what the issue was. Me. Uh, is everything okay, ma'am? Her. Are you having car problems? Uh, no. I'm just waiting until it's safe to pull out. Her. Oh, honey, you need to go. You're holding up traffic. If there's an accident, that's what insurance is for. My jaw dropped open after she said that. I was completely livid inside, but I took a deep breath and nodded, acting like she was right. Uh, okay, sorry. She walked back to her car and I rolled the window up while wondering, who the heck does she think she is? Yeah, you're right, lady. I do have insurance, but I also don't want to get into ridiculous accidents that are easily avoided. If people are coming past my road, I'm waiting until they come by, no matter how long it takes. I'm not going to jeopardize my or others' safety just so you can be satisfied. I get that you have somewhere you need to be but I care more about being safe when I'm driving a motor vehicle than taking risks to get to class on time. I'd rather show up late to school than be in the hospital because of something that could have been avoided. Part of the reason why this had me so angry was because I actually got into my first car accident at that exact same place two months prior to this happening. It was a very minor accident with minimal damage and the person at fault couldn't be determined. So me and the other person just decided to drop the whole thing and go on about our lives. It still scared me a lot though, and it's made me a very cautious and careful driver. Next we've got, no good deed goes unpunished. This happened today, and I'm still on shock someone could be this entitled to someone like my mom. Some backstory. My mom is a bit of a hippie, electric car driving, CSA using, zero waster, habitat for humanity volunteering, farmers market organizing hippie, and had me as a teen. She got married to my stepdad and they lived in an off the grid house, beautiful place, on a lake in New England. A couple of years ago, my stepdad passed away and my mom has been really lonely so she's been helping out single moms in between houses in her coach house. The average stay is a week or two, although on occasion she rents it during the winter. She doesn't charge the short-term boarders for anything. I try to get out there for a few months a year with the kids to spend time with her, and she always has our place beautifully set up, but won't have boarders there because we're visiting in mass. My oldest, three months, also has asthma, so dust and mold are triggers for him. It's so bad that we had to move houses, move to a smaller town, and I had to quit my job so I could stay home because he gets dangerously sick fast. I'll be visiting this weekend, so she wanted the place cleared and cleaned by Monday. So early in September, my mom was at the CSA and overheard a very young single mom with a new baby living out of her car asking for help purchasing food because, insert sob story here, and she won't have a place until mid-September. 
This girl presents herself as a teenager who wants to save the environment and has dropped out of school and was kicked out of her house because she got pregnant. My mom, being the bleeding heart she is, tells them that they could stay with her for no charge until they could move into their new place mid-September. Well, to my mom's surprise, and honestly no one else's, this girl is a complete mess. She leaves all of her clothes all over the lawn in the rain, covers spills with carpets, etc. She didn't want to use the high efficiency heater and bought an electric without telling my mom and left all the windows open every day. So instead of generating energy, my mom had to pay hundreds in electricity for three weeks. My mom found something sweet for the baby, but the girl only wanted organic cotton or wool touching her little infant, and rather than give it back, she used it as a rag. This is the quality of person she is. And then it gets worse. This girl started avoiding my mom, so my mom sent emails asking her move-in date to the new place because we're coming to visit for October. Finally, after getting a hold of her dad from the contact info she gave my mom, he tells my mom that she isn't 17 like she's let on, but 22 and has been like this her whole life. She actually broke the lease in her last place because she didn't like the air and canceled the lease to the place she was supposed to move into for some other complete BS reason and didn't tell my mom and had the option to move in with any of her four older siblings but refused to because she didn't like their location slash personality slash rules. So finally, this woman child responds to my mom and says she'll be out on Wednesday so she could start cleaning then. Wednesday rolls around and my mom goes into the guest house and her stuff is all still there. On top of that, because she left the windows open, mold has set in and she was using the electric heater on high while she was gone next to a pile of dirty clothes and sheets. The bathroom was utterly stained, covered in mold and trashed. So my mom starts to bleach the bathroom and this utter piece of human garbage comes home and starts accusing my mom of trying to hurt them. Because bleach is worse than mold? She then tells her that she'll be out on Friday. Friday rolls around, so my mom goes back in there. The girl still has some stuff in there, but her coach house is completely trashed. My mom needs to redo some of the floor, replace a mattress, repaint, and get in professional cleaners to clean up the biohazard that the girl has created. We were supposed to be down last Saturday, but had to move the date to this weekend because of the mold and chemicals used to clean. But what really upsets my mom is the amount of garbage generated by this girl. In three weeks, she refused to separate any of her garbage and generated a dumpster of trash. My mom sent her an email calling her out for her hypocrisy, only to have a response that she, my mom, was a narcissist who was trying to help her only to feel better about herself and was violating her personal space. She was so entitled that she has put out a smear campaign against my mom in the community. My mom, who honestly has done more for her community than anyone can imagine, often anonymously, who was widowed at 50, who couldn't do something mean if her life depended on it, and believe me, I was not an easy kid. I just got off the phone with my mom and I'm completely shocked. She had sent a picture and she had used disposable diapers all over the kitchen and in the fridge and pantry. Spilled shakes were all over the counter and floor. The repairs are looking like a few grand plus cleaning. I wish there was a happy ending to this story, but I'll be going down this weekend if there are any updates. Sorry if this came out as a rant, but I'm just livid. Next we've got, Entitled Parent Wants Money for Shoes He Didn't Bring Back because they were labeled wrong. Yesterday, I was out shopping for shoes at a department store. I was in there when it opened and already saw an employee not having a good start of the day. For starters, she was a stockroom employee. I know since I shop there often and have chatted with her. She is really nice and tends to compliment everyone with almost every breath she takes. One can tell when she is stressed since she insults herself out loud more which she was currently doing, as before she could open the registers, customers were coming in. I was just looking at shoes, not wanting to overwhelm the poor thing. 
She finally got the registers open when this surly looking man came in, waving a receipt in her face. Give me my money back, it's wrong. He snapped at her with a heavy accent. She smiled and took the receipt. All right, let me check. What is the issue? She said in her sweet tone, but she didn't compliment him. Yep, she wasn't happy with him. The shoes are too much. Let me check. She punches in some numbers into a device. No, that is correct. It is not correct. They are wrong. Different color shoes shouldn't be different prices. I checked the shoes. They were not labeled correctly. They were labeled correctly. I did it myself so I would know. However, I get your frustration and your confusion. I don't get why it's like that either. But as you can see, they are correctly priced. She showed him the device with the prices. No, they are wrong. He then grabs her and pulls her along to the shoes. They were here and they were labeled wrong. You have to fix this. I am sorry, but you are incorrect. They are labeled correctly. As you said, they were different colors. Different colors have different prices on sales. I don't even know why. It is a frustration even I deal with. Oh, how I wish things were more even, but alas, they are. She was wiggling her wrist free from him as she talked. He kept at this for about 20 minutes until the worker said, It seems I am unable to help you, sir. Please allow me to get someone who can assist you better. The man grunted agreement. The worker then got on the phone to call her manager. I have this customer. I have explained to him this price thing with his receipt several times already, and he still doesn't get it. I am getting very frustrated. Can you please help me, darling? Oh, thank you. Really, she just calls people darling without meaning anything romantic. It is a good gauge to tell if she doesn't like you though. She returned to the man after she hung up with her manager and said, Okay, my manager is coming down to assist you soon. I hope that is helpful. The man grunted at her again. After that, the worker went to being able to help other customers that were coming. Each customer was greeted with her usual, very flirtatious, yet complimenting ways of speaking. The manager came over and started to talk with the man from before. He started to shout about how things were not labeled right, how the service was terrible, and how he wanted the sales employees whom helped him fired for being incompetent. He pointed at the girl and then talked about another. I need to see the shoes in question. I can't fire my employees as I don't know who served you. And she is a stockroom employee, not a sales associate. She was doing the best she could to help you. That is why she called me. And after more yelling, the man was given a $10 gift card and he left in a huff. The girl was helping me with shoes. Hey, what got that man upset? I asked her. Oh, I do apologize about that, darling. I wish I could tell you all about it. However, wouldn't that be rude of me? Now, are these shoes the ones you wanted? Let me know of anything I can help you with, as I would love to make customers smile, she said, and handed me the shoes I asked for. And shoutouts to our re-generals of the day, the Gaming Fin 200 Zacrom, Dreamwalker the Waking Dream, Chissy Spider, and Hi I'm Nix. Become tomorrow's re-generals by leaving as many re's as you can in the comments below.